Hey everyone, welcome back to another podcast with The Whole Truth. So today's podcast is actually going to be about Courtney Borges and how she plays the ultimate victim. Now I know I got I did promise you guys that I'd be doing a Crystal and Matt history video and I am working my way through that. I just had to get a fair few notes and everything to try and like jog my memory of like what happened in what order and make sure I didn't forget anything because that was a pretty hectic relationship. So that is coming. I wanted to talk about Courtney at the moment because there is so much, you know, she's posting a lot about the gossip pages and a lot about her ex again. And I mean, I don't know why I say again, because it's not like it's ever stopped. They've been broken up for, I'm going to say two years now. Um, and she still posts about him relentlessly. She just will not give up. So, um, I noticed there was like a bit of a theme on the comments and everyone was like, you know, it gets to the point where if you have this many issues with people, you have to understand that maybe you're the problem. And I don't think Courtney's quite grasped that yet. You know, I think she really likes playing that victim mentality. Um, and she'll come up to any excuse why she isn't to blame for any situation. And she'll accept that behavior until she needs to use it against somebody. And then when she's you know done with that person, she will use that behavior to paint them out to be the bad guy and her out to be the victim. It happens every time. So let's just like take a jog back to um, when her and Mel were together and, you know, it was always a love bombing in the pics and, you know, my husband and this and that. And they weren't married, but, you know, it was that sort of commenting like, he's my soulmate, the love of my life and all the rest. And then they break up and she posts, like when they broke up, there's still nothing really negative about him. It was like, I'm so sorry, I'm a spoiled brat, you know, I want you back. And she's begging for him back in these stories, you know. She's like, um, I was so ungrateful, you did everything for us, like for our little family and like referred to him as Shiloh's dad and just, you know, I think it was something like you got us an apartment and I was ungrateful and you went to work and I took you for granted, I'm so sorry, like please, get, like, I want you back. And then she went and got a heap of post-its and she went to Mel's work and Mel, by this time, Mel had a new girlfriend. And I don't know if Courtney was aware of it at the time, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure she was aware of it, that he was like kind of seeing someone else, but she was like begging. And so she got all these post-its and she filled them up saying like all the reasons why she loved him and she wanted him back. And then she put these post-its all over his car. But later on, she found out you know, and this is all in her story. Like she shared this whole thing on her story. It was really crazy. I mean, one thing with Courtney is she does, she cannot see crazy. Like she cannot identify crazy behavior. Like we all seen it and was like, oh, you know, and there is like a borderline between being sweet and being crazy. Like I could you imagine being the new girlfriend and you start dating someone and they're like leaving post-its all over their car, like awkward, you know, that's just weird. But anyway, Courtney finds out that Mel and his new girlfriend laughed about it, which you'd have to. You'd just be like, oh, fucking Jesus, you know, what the? And, you know, they she, she found out that they laughed about it and then suddenly it was on. Like, it was like, he's abusive, um, you know, and she posts this picture where her eye is all bruised. And, you know, there was a lot of speculation that it was enhanced a lot by makeup because if you look at it, it's a very shimmery black eye, like, I have had a black eye before and mine did not shimmer like that. Like, the, I don't know. But that was like one thing people said. And she shared all of these toxic recordings where, you know, she's like antagonizing. Like, she's actually antagonizing him in the beginning of these, these, like these recordings. And she's privately recording it. So he doesn't know it's being recorded. But like, she knows that she's being recorded and she's still acting that way. Um, and he doesn't even know he's being recorded and obviously like, you know, he's snapping back. Like he's saying like, you know, F off or shut up. Like you're crazy. And you know, she's just the whole time she's like trying to push him to get a reaction so that she can share that reaction. So she's recorded all this and she's shared them and she's not realizing that these recordings make her look bad. For starters, who has an argument with their partner and then records it to use against them later? Well, who does that? Nobody does that, you know? If you think that you've got to use something to get some later, why are you still in that household? Like, leave. You should be out of there by now. There's no reason. You know, we've seen the same thing with Crystal and Matt. It was just 
insane. But there is no reason to be recording your conversation. But at the same token, she's recording this and, you know, he's having a reaction to what she's saying. She sounds worse in the video and she knows it's being recorded. So it just shows what she was like. Um, but then she had, she tried to have a restraining order put on him. And this is kind of weird, like, you know, having a restraining order put on someone that you're putting post-it notes on their car of how much you love them and all the rest and trying to put like this domestic violence. Now, obviously she knew if he's been beating her or abusing her, she knew that two days prior, but it was only when she found out that the girlfriend and Mel were laughing that she put on this domestic abuse. Like, no, there had been no domestic violence between that period because he hadn't seen her. And then all of a sudden she wants to wait, lay charges on him. Like three days earlier, she's begging for him back, you know? It just And I understand like how domestic violence can work and it can be a bit funny sometimes, but it's like a retaliation. It's always a retaliation with her. And I'll give you more examples in a moment. But, um, you know, how can you go and put a restraining order on someone? Or try to. And they put... Like, he ended up successfully putting one on her. And I understand why it was granted. Because, like, take one picture of those sticky notes. And that's stalker material right there. Um, you know, if you're with them, I understand it. And, you know, it's a cute gesture. But, you know, how do you do that? And then the next day be like, well, he abused me. They know it's retaliation. They know that it's out of spite. Um, you know, and then she went on this rampage. Everyone's confused. We're like, what? Like, you just wanted him back yesterday and now, like, you're telling us he abused you. Um, it's crazy. But then she was, like, driving past his work and she would have, like, a song blaring and she'd be screaming it out of her window. For, like, for what reason? Like, I think it was all a show for her followers, but it just made her look absolutely crazy. Um, and then following that, she exploited all his charges for his assault on a little girl. So if, if memory serves correctly, like, like if I'm wrong, write in the comments. But if memory serves correctly, he was married before he had an ex-girlfriend. She had a child and they went to court for um, like assaulting this child. So the child got in trouble and he smacked the child on the bottom until um, – like they left, it left bruises and red marks. And then the child's father seen it and was like, what the fuck, you know? So she had these, he, um, the, I think the mum had charges on her as well, but Mel had charges on him. So back then Mel identified as a woman, I believe. Um, and then, you know, suddenly Courtney's exploiting this and she's like, you know, look at this paperwork and, and showed this paperwork, you know, that he had these assault charges. And people were like, what the fuck? Like, why would you have that man in your house with Shiloh? Like, obviously, you knew about his behavior in the past, and she backpedaled so far. She was like, I didn't know that. You know, I found the paperwork in the cupboard afterwards. Like, he'd had it hidden in the back of the closet. I'm sorry, no. Like, in my house, I basically know that you couldn't hide anything from me. I don't go looking for stuff, but I literally know you clean and you sort paperwork and, you, you know, you file it and you pick up your kids toys and you put stuff away like there is nothing like that that could be in my home for over a year and me like go oh shit I never seen this before I just magically found it in the back of the closet two days after we broke up seems a little bit odd so my guess is I'm not saying Courtney's like totally to blame here my guess is she knew about it but you know she was under like you know, a different sort of pretense. You know, when you love someone, you don't want to believe they do something bad. So you kind of listen to their skewed version of what happened, which is technically kind of like what Hale's doing now with Courtney, you know. Hale loves her, so he's going to listen to her side of the story. And he never, he wasn't around to see what happened with Mel. Like, we all seen that happen. He wasn't around to see that. So, of course, he's going to believe his wife's story. Like, what? you're not going to believe anyone else. Um... So I feel like, you know, Mel just gave like a story like that's not how it happened. Like the child was naughty and I smacked her and then I got in trouble. I don't know. Like there's not really any, there is no excuse for smacking a child and leaving a mark. But there's, you know, this is Courtney. Like there's no excuse for uploading a picture of your child dancing and zooming in on their body and having the word aroused in the song lyrics or hashtagging it as baby daddy dom. Like, oh, fuck. I think it just it makes my skin crawl 
Um, so I feel like if you're going to do that and exploit your child like that, you're probably going to turn a blind eye to some of the other shit that's going on. Um, I mean, how many people has Shiloh been dragged around? She doesn't know any different. It's kind of like Jen Abmer or whatever her name is. It's like a similar situation. Um, but I just feel like she definitely knew about that. She knew about that situation and she just twisted it to turn it um, so that basically what she's trying to do is make it so that Mel is the bad guy in the situation. And, you know, from what she's portrayed already online, she's desperate because people know that she's the one that's been abusive. Like they could see it because they seen it in the stories and they can see the craziness and they're like, well, you know, why are you having him charged when you say you're begging for him back? It definitely looks like a retaliation. Um, so, you know, she pulled out this one because this was the big guns. Like she pulled this one out and everyone's going to be like, oh my God, Mel's disgusting, you know? And then she sends it to his work and sends it to all these people. And they're like, you know, of course she comes across as crazy. You know, if anyone else told you that story, you'd be like, oh, okay. But when it's a crazy ex-girlfriend, you're just like, mm, righto, sister. I don't think so. So then let's go to like the next thing. I've got like notes here, so excuse me. Um, so she claimed that she didn't know about them, so we know that. Then she, like her last job most, most recently. So she went on her live and she explained to us that she was accused of stealing. So I don't know if it was, um, she said someone had messaged her and like overheard a conversation maybe. I don't know. But she was accused of stealing um, and they brought her into work and they sacked her. They told her she was fired or whatever. She lost her job. And then, wow. So she goes on live and she's like, you know, um, my old boss, you know, was overlooking sexual assault. Like they, the, the guys, I don't know if it was the boss or if it was her boss or if it was like, it wasn't obviously the owner of there, but like the boss or like someone under, it was someone above her anyway, I believe. But she was like, you know, he would like flirt with me and that would be totally different when Hale wasn't there and he used to sleep with underage girls. And she said that they found like condoms and have to clean up like condoms in the tattoo parlor and all the rest. And, you know, she's, she then shares a screenshot and the screenshots between her and an, another employee at the tattoo parlor and they're talking about like having to clean this shit up. And it's months prior, you know. So she she's sitting there saying, well, they're, they're sleeping with underage girls. And they're doing this and they're doing that. You knew that for months. Why wouldn't you say anything? Like now that you're fired, you decide to speak up. Is it because you're concerned about those 15-year-old girls? You know, are you going to sit there and call them pedophiles or predators? But you sat there and you allowed for that to go on. You allowed for them to sleep with 15-year-old girls. You didn't speak up. You didn't report that to anyone but you used it for your own personal agenda when you got fired. Like it just, you know, I, I cannot believe, like don't sit there and act like you have all these morals and how disgusting you're sleeping with 15 year olds when you knew and you enabled that. Like there is nothing grosser than like, obviously I don't know if he knows it's wrong or if he thinks it's wrong, but she, she says she thinks it's wrong. So why the fuck aren't you standing up and saying something at the time? Like you waited till you got fired to do that because you wanted to retaliate. She only uses the information when she for her own gain. It's only for her own gain. She doesn't care about those 15 year old girls. She does not give a fuck. And that's that annoys the fuck out of me. Um so she did she definitely said that she knew for months. But so my biggest thing with her is how much of a hypocrite she is. Let me just I'm gonna play this video for you. It's just gonna be the audio. So listen to this audio and this is Courtney having a big rant on her story, I think a couple of days ago now. Um, but just have a listen to the thing she says and how hypocritical it is. It's insane. Harass the shit and abuse the fuck out of everyone around you. And then you get mad when that person shows any sort of anger or animosity over the fact that they're being treated like actual garbage. And it blows my fucking mind because so many people out here are blamed for being crazy or psycho or, or, oh, she's a mess. No, she's just sticking the fuck up for herself because she's been stabbed in the fucking back over a million times in the last 27 years of her life, probably. And you're mad about it because you treated her like that. Point being, if you don't like someone's behavior towards you, maybe you should take a good hard look at yourself and ask why they're treating you like that. 
If there's no good goddamn reason, honestly, and they are just are in a bad fucking mood, then move the fuck on. Right. So let's break that down. When you abuse everyone around you and then get mad that a person shows any anger or animosity over the fact they're being treated like actual garbage. So correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that what she kind of admitted to doing when she did that story saying sorry to Mel and that she wanted him back? Like she said in that story that she treated him badly. You know, he went out and he worked. He got them an apartment to look after their little family and she acted like a brat and took him for granted. That's that's some of the things that were said. If you want to see those things that were said, you can, I think it's like um, a recap video two, maybe one or two. Um, you'd have to scroll down a fair way. But I'm pretty sure it's all on there. It shows like the post-it notes and all the rest. She then continues with, so many people are being blamed for being crazy or psycho. Right. So obviously people think she's crazy. I think she's crazy or psycho. Or at least she acts like she's crazy or psycho. This is an example of why. So she posts this on her story and she says, you know someone feels threatened by your presence when they have their lover block you too. Cheers, bitches. Someday you'll unblock me at just the right time and I'll be able to block your toxic cells from secretly creeping on me while I don't give a shit about you. First of all, there is so much to unpack here. There is so much to unpack. But how do you know that person has you blocked unless you're searching for them? Like clearly you typed in their name to find out that they've blocked you. So who's doing the stalking here? Like, obviously, you do care about them. Like, she says, yeah, you know, um, someone feels threatened by it. I don't think Mel feels threatened by it at all. Like, Mel doesn't want to do with her. Like, he's tried to express this to her several times. He broke up with her, and then he's not mentioned her since, you know? Like, he avoids mentioning her. And she is, like, hung up on him so badly. Um, but then she's like, you know, someday you'll unblock me just at the right time to I'll be able to unblock you. What is the point of that? Like, they've got you blocked, okay? So why would you want to then block them? It makes no sense. Like, they already have you blocked. So it doesn't matter who does the blocking. It's not like, you know, you've got to have the last say by blocking. That's just ridiculous. Like, just block each other and fucking move on. They've had enough of you. Like, I do not blame them. There is a reason why they have you blocked because obviously you're trying to lurk on their shit. They've blocked you to keep you out of their lives. And you've noticed, because obviously you were lurking, otherwise you wouldn't have noticed that they had you blocked. Um, and then it says, like, you know, someday you'll unblock me at just the right time and I'll be able to block you. What, what is just the right time? Like, literally, anytime Courtney's on Facebook, she'll be, like, checking them to see if they've got her unblocked yet. Like, check again and see if they've got her unblocked. How fucking crazy is this? Like, what is going on in her mind? This is insane. I don't know how Hale can allow it to continue. Like, I would feel so disrespected if my husband was searching his ex-girlfriend constantly, hoping that she had unblocked him so he could block her and have the last say. Like, I can't. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like, lock her up. Please put her in a straitjacket. Like, medicate her. I, I don't know. Like, um, give her some crayons and a helmet to pass the time. Like just, I don't know what you do with someone at this point. Like, it's gone on for so long now that he's, you know, he can't, I don't think he could even stop this if he tried. But that, that whole statement is just the weirdest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, you know, unblock me just at the right time so I can block you. And then she's got, you know, from secretly creeping on me. Why the fuck do they care? They don't post about you. They don't creep on you. Like you think that people are obsessed with you and they're not. Like these people just want to move on with their lives. Like he left you two years ago. Let him move on. You should move on too. Like you've got an incredible husband now. I don't know why you're obsessing over Mel. It's weird. Um, but then she goes, you know, block your toxic cells from secretly creeping on me while I don't give a shit about you. Go. You cannot post about someone 24 fucking seconds, like 24 seven and be like, I don't give a shit about you. Like, why are you searching her then? And it's weird. Like you don't search the new, like, you know, people might do it like, and be like, Oh, I want to see what she looks like. And we can all be like, Oh, you know, when you're with your friends, your girlfriends are on Facebook, you're like, let's look her up and then be like, Oh, you know, he's downgraded or whatever. But two years on, no, stop it. Stop it. Um, 
And then, like, if we keep going with this video originally, she says in there, she's been stabbed in the back over a million times in the last 27 years of her life. So, you know, if you're sitting there and you're saying that you've been stabbed in the back a million times, maybe your whole, you know, the, the idea that you have of what actually went down isn't what happened. Like, you might have, like, a skewed sense of reality um, and you probably think you're in the right all the time and that they're the monsters, I don't know, but do you not think maybe, and I've seen this comment on my page a million times, how do you not look back and go, all the, like a million people have stuffed me over in 27 years of my life and it's always been their fault. They're the problem. I'm not the problem. It's always their fault. Um, I don't understand it. Like I, and I've actually seen DMs where people have, and this is people that have like found her, like one person found her from my, from my YouTube page. And they went and followed her and they're like, oh my God, she seems really sweet. I think they followed her for like maybe a day. I don't know. But they messaged her and was like, oh my God, do you know about this? And they sent her the video of me talking about, you know, her breakup with, um, I think it was actually about the hate page thing, like when she was running her own hate page. And she was in like, they were like, have you seen this? And they were like, oh yeah. And they were talk and she's talking to them, but she's like attacking them. Like they're there on her side. And, and I think the girl had said something like, you know, oh, my God, they did a good job of, like, um, they good, did a good job of, like, pretending to be you. And she's like, they didn't do a good job. And she's, like, snapping at this girl and going off her head. And this person is in support. And because of this, that person has now joined our page because they're like, she's a fucking psycho. You know, so she doesn't even realise how she talks to people. Like, you know, we've seen that day where the neighbours come over and she's, like, screaming at the neighbours. And then the live goes off and we're like, oh, fuck, like, they're going to punch on. But that's how she talks to people. They're all getting along. Like, who gets in people's faces and screams like that and talks like that? And, you know, I can see why people just think she's too much. Like, she's definitely too much at times. Um, but, like, like I said, like, that one there was crazy. Like, that person was there to back her up and she just absolutely <laughs> – she was so nasty. Um, and then she goes on to say – if you don't like someone's behavior, you should take a good, hard look at yourself and ask why they're treating you like that. And if there's no good reason, then move the fuck on. Firstly, take a page out of this book. Like, come on. If you don't like someone's behavior, you should take a good look at yourself, okay? Courtney, how can you sit there? And, like, you have said every relationship you've been in has been violent or you've had some sort of abuse towards you. Okay, like, you know, I think with the first husband, it was like, you know, emotional abuse and this and that. And I, like, she, anything someone says to her, like, if she, the thing she says to other people, she would never accept being said to her. Like, it would be abusive, like, no doubt. But she doesn't seem to think the rules apply to her. Um, but she does. She needs to take a good look at herself and think, why are all my relationships ending this way? Why are they all going down the drain? I don't know how Hale deals with what he deals with. Like, I, maybe there is like another kind of like fetish with like helping disturbed people or I really, I don't know what the kink is. There has to be something because I don't, I just don't understand how someone can be treated that way and you know, how you can be happy with that toxic relationship where it's up and down, up and down. And then, you know, someone that is constantly, creating drama like always creating drama out of nothing and just like you know how do you have a relationship with someone that is always that dramatic like I, I'm assuming there's going to be issues between her and Hal's family um because you know Courtney's always in control she always has to be in control she has to like make everybody around her seem like they're in the wrong for things because she can't you know, make herself a better person. So she has to make other people a worse person. And this is how, you know, this all comes in with the whole being the ultimate victim. Because she can't improve herself, she chooses to, like, knock other people down around her so she appears to be higher. But in reality, that's not the case. Um, and then at the end, she's like, you know, if there's no good reason why people are treating you that way, then move the fuck on. Courtney, oh, my God. Hello, Mel, he's gone, okay? You've moved on now. Let it go. Because when you're on there and you're constantly talking about how abusive he was, and, like, this guy is, like, silent. Like, he has not said shit about her. Meanwhile, she's making TikToks, like, all these stories, 
all of their friends, like all of their old friends are laughing at her. Like she's literally made herself the laughing stock of that town. And she's admitted that herself. Like I've seen her go on to her um, Instagram stories and being like, you know, I don't really have any friends around here because they're sick of hearing like me talking about Mel. Like damn fucking right they are. Like can you blame them? Imagine hanging out with her and the only thing she wants to talk about is her ex that broke up with her two years ago. I just don't understand it. But anyway, so she she posted this TikTok the other day and it was it was just basically her, um, you know, picking and choosing what she wanted to display with what happened with um, with Mel. So it was like our the TWT page and there was comments that everyone had left. And I don't know where she's getting the comments from. She's probably got a friend to join it. I don't think Mel um, – I don't think that, sorry, Hale would be sending it to her because Hale doesn't like the drama. But, I mean, if I did find out that it was him, he would be off the page as well because, you know, I at the end of the day, I've got to protect the members on there. But I also want to give everybody a fair chance to be able to join the page. And he wanted to join the page because, you know, he works night shifts, so you've got to have something to do, right? Um, so, but anyway, she shared this thing on TikTok and it – the it's a screenshot of like conversations like the comments everyone said about you know how she's acting crazy and stuff and then she shares on tiktok and she's laughing it and then she shows like the paperwork of the assault on that child and then she shows these text messages and it's just like i think i already went through this before but she just has you know this obsession with the page um and like i can guarantee you after this story she'll be on that store like after we do this podcast and it goes on youtube she'll be on there with some sort of rebuttal because she can't help herself a lot of them are like this you know there's a few insta mums that actually you know follow the page um but they keep pretty respectful so i don't mind them being there like they understand how the page is ran that they will be subbed about sometimes and they don't have the hissy fits that the others do so i'm fine with them being there um how it, and and this is one of the reasons why she can't be there because she was you know she took part before and the second that they're subbed about they cannot take it at all so anyway that's pretty much it for this video i just thought i'd go through it because um obviously so much has been happening over the last couple of days i'm really sorry i'm so far behind in subs but i am going to catch up on them i just wanted to get a little bit of info um over the last couple of days to try and work out like the Matt and Crystal backstory and all the rest. Um, but I will see you guys back on the TWT 3.0 page. Bye.